Good morning. It is the 30th of November 2022. It's a Wednesday morning. And what we have on our table this morning is a fistful of turkey, so which is put out by uh, mitigating the concepts. We're going to get into that in a moment. But first, let's get into this. Let me shill for a minute. This is my new game. This is a return address, Cat Low. It's a Vietnam letter writing game. It is an interesting game in that, that you don't see um, letter writing um, simulated very much in, in, in war games, right? So this whole point of that was to simulate the, uh, <clears throat> of Vietnam, in particularly in Vietnam, but this could be, you know, uh, in any area, in any era, letters have been seriously important. So send it home, and it may be to your family, it may do an be another, a serviceman's family, and it may be to the high command in, um, in Saigon. So it's one of those things, and this is and we've made a game out of it, and it's a kind of an interesting game. And I may even, I may even do a uh, video on uh, making how to how to play, um, because you gotta have fun with it. It's not like you take it too seriously. You have fun with it in the letter writing, and you, you try to score points, right? So you have fun with it. It's something that you can get into a role as a role, right? Um, you can take on the role as actually a uh, a lieutenant junior grade in the uh, in, in Vietnam of a navy lieutenant junior grade in Vietnam, and uh, there you go. Now on with this. This is a fistful of turkeys. Let's 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 look at. It. Let's take it out of the out of the back. Look at that. That's old school, right? That's how. So many of those meta gaming games was done with that plastic bag, just taped, just taped, right? And this, if we look at it, you look at it, you look, you see, you have it. This is 1981, I do believe, and it's, it says number one, um, and it says produced by some Turkey Games. The reason this is done is, I look at the Clint Eastwood type spaghetti western character right there. Um, reason this was done, this was done by Howard Thompson, Howard M. Thompson, who has started Metagaming Concepts. <clears throat> and after starting Metagaming Concepts, he's to, he also had a zine, which was the Space Gamer. And he was advertising in uh, a newspaper, I believe. Was it a newspaper or a magazine? I can't really remember. Uh, and, you know, a fellow Texan... You know, Howard Thompson down Texas and fellow Texan picked up on that who was named was Steve Jackson who seen the one ad for one of the editor of a zine the spe what turned out to be a space gamer and so he turns out he's overqualified for that but he was given a development job worked on development and then finally put out Ogre as his first design in 1977 I do believe and kind of took off from there and kind of became the did become the principal designer and developer of metagaming concepts. Well, they had a bad parting of the ways, if you will. And so um, it, I've heard all kinds of stories about what happened. Most stories involves around the fantasy trip role-playing game and system and how that, <clears throat> the time it took and the energy it put into it and how complicated it was, Howard Thompson didn't like it. And they they have they fell out over that, but uh, to his credit, Steve Jackson has said it was he said some things Howard Thompson didn't like and whatever they were, and they fell out and it was a bad falling out. Um, Howard Thompson kept the rights to um, the fantasy trip for all that time. They just it just that just went into public domain and was re released by Steve Jackson, right? So it's just crazy all the stuff that was done. And um, yeah, a copyright lapsed on that uh, on that fantasy trip <laughs> all them years. And Howard Thompson was obviously hurt and mad and a little bit of everything. And this is one of the games he put out. And why he put it out, it's really making fun of Steve Jackson Games. Their first game was, which he had started while still at Metagaming, was um, One Page Bulge. And so... He put it out in one page, and so Howard Thompson did the same thing, making fun of uh, or poking fun at the new games of Steve Jackson and how they were put 
and their their um, their layout and how they are produced, right? To the credit of see, to two sided. To the credit of there you go. That's why it was one page bulge, right? To the credit of um, to Steve Jackson's credit, he did find out a way to make his games and. I sympathize because I'm telling you, 1981, it wasn't all that easy how, how you're going to print a game and how it's going to be done. And um, so, yeah, he did what he had to do, did the cheapest way, the way to get it done. And Steve Jackson Games became something pretty important uh, and still survives till this day, which so many others have fell up by the wayside. But this is just a pure satire, right? And it's Cup 1981 by some turkey games. It's metagame and all the other things. Some turkey games. And <clears throat> game designer, some turkey. <laughs> Play tested by some turkey. Graphics by some turkey. Research by some turkey. Concept by some turkey. With an introduction by some turkey dedicated to Mother Turkey. Right? So the interesting thing about this is that this is actually... This is actually a playable game, and it'll, it, which is very cool. Hi, I'm some turkey. Let's read just a little bit of an introduction. Hi, I'm some turkey. This is the first name game that I've ever published under my own true name. You've probably played several of the world famous games which I've previously written under the, under another name. Legal technical techni technicality. Excuse me. Forbid me to mention them here, but if you knew, you'd be amazed by the brilliant and creative, how brilliant and creative I really am. I even amaze myself at times, and you can imagine how fantastic I must be to amaze myself. Now, that's just, he's poking pop fun at Steve Jackson. I mean, that's just how that is. Um, it's gone. You're going to read a little. Congratulations. You have shown extremely good taste by picking up this game. <laughs> but believe it or not, this is the history-making first game ever published by some turkey games. First incredibly real turkey game designer under his own name. A fistful of turkeys is some turkeys remarkably well-balanced and historically accurate simula simulation of the infamous Billy Jackal's one-man crusade against the Grand Turkey Conspiracy. Right? So there it is. And the game buzzers. Oh, gosh. Complete with rules, map, and counters. Authors note, this is not a micro game, even though it looks like one. <laughs> even though it's the same time, and even though it follows the same format as micro games. Okay. Yeah, Howard Thompson developed a micro game. That was his idea. And his whole point of it was so the games would fit inside the soft book rack at bookstores or drugstores or wherever they had the, the spinner rack, the soft book rack, if you remember, the pocket book rack we used to call it. And so when Steve Jackson leaves, you know, Steve Jackson ogre was made to fit in a in a uh, micro game format for that very reason, and they never got in to any bookstores or any other place to fit in those racks, drugstores or anywhere else. But the concept did take off, and so you have Steve Jackson starting his own game. And then remember, a lot of this was done. I mean, he went through courts and everything. The properties were split up. The fantasy trip didn't go to Jackson, but Ogre, he got Ogre's properties, they went. And um, just, man, it was just um, dirty. So his first game was, as I said, one page bulge and um, made in this format. I've got a reprint of it. I should have had that. Uh, um, I've looked at it earlier. You can go back in the videos and find one page bulge. And so, um, <laughs> so... He's saying, hey, this isn't a micro game. This isn't the micro gaming of meta gaming. This is another game. This is a another kind of a small game. So it's a po it's a it's 
poking fun at Steve Jackson. Um, a touchingly warm personal letter to gamers from your friend and mine. S. Turkey, <laughs> oh man, and it, to his credit, I mean this is this is to his credit he does put some neat ones in here. Um, spot gaming instead of SPI. Um, yuck into yuck into games that was Yaquinto Game Demeanors Workshop Game Design Don Don Buffalo obviously. Uh, 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 he made fun of his own stuff. Money gaming for meta gaming. Don Buffalo for Flying Buffalo. Avalon Swill, right? Task Farce Games, BSR, right? Muggers Guild. So he's he's making fun of everybody. But it, it's he even did another one called uh, instead of one page bulge, one tub bilge, which was another uh, game. And these are some of the last games. Not not exactly the last games, but some of the last games before he left the. Uh, seen all together, and uh, which I always thought it kind of a sad thing that the guy who started a micro game just left the scene just for whatever reason. But here's rules, and let's see if I can find a the there is a uh, sequence of play. Let me see. Two cents. Okay, here it is. Phase one. Uh, do this. There we go. Phase one, Billy moves. And he can walk and crawl, crawl stand, trot, crash. All right? Phase. That's the phase. Phase, where's two? Okay, bonk, whoops, fall, or stun. Phase two, Billy attacks. Right. Phase three, turkeys move, which there's a a movement chart that's going to tell you. Phase four, turkeys attack. And then, um, hard to follow, but. Then we're going to look at game aids over here. It's going to be about, this game, of course, is, is polished and complete version in itself requiring only dice for play however being the gamer minded big time ga game designer that I am gosh gosh he's really he's really pissed it Steve Jackson obviously um, in some ways it's sad right yeah, but here you go here's your map Here's your counter sheet, and of course, if you're you're gonna have to cut it up to play. I'm gonna make I'll make a copy and, and uh, play it. I'm gonna play it um, just for the fact to do that. But there it is. That's it. That's just a piece of gaming history, a micro gaming history at that. And I love micro games, and I love collecting them. So um, I just wanted to show you that, and I've uh, been wanting to do that for some time. But thought, hey, is it is there any interest in something like this? You can find copies for five six dollars sometimes so they're not that bad but it's a neat piece of game in history neat piece of war game in history and just really uh, and there it is and so uh, but like I said it's a game it's a simul and it's, a, it's attempting to be a simulation just just funny you you would do something like this this tongue-in-cheek and this much for a joke but you make the game playable which is very very cool all right so like I said new game it's um, I don't think it's for everybody, but I think it you would have fun if you really took on the role, play this right. Uh, it's six dollars and fifty cents. I make almost nothing off these games, so it's just I just do it for fun and a hobby, and do it to produce games that people can afford. Um, war, war gaming can be an expensive hobby, and I'm aware of that. So I want to produce things people can afford, and um, people get their hands on. So. All right, folks, y'all have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.